One of my earliest memories is of my grandmother sitting before her electric typewriter, rapidly composing a story for our local newspaper. Perhaps she had just come back from a community meeting or an event at the high school, but she was pounding those keys against the black backdrop of our farmhouse windows. At one moment, she was intensely focused, and then at the other, she was turning to laugh with me, her firstborn grandson. It was the first of many moments in my life in which my grandmother inspired me to become a writer. Six years ago, I stood before folks in my hometown, and I shared that memory as we all gathered to take stock of her long, robust life. True to her form, it was more of a celebration than a funeral, and more about storytelling than mourning. And I learned that day that my grandmother was that very particular kind of Swiss Army knife that you find in a rural community. She was a writer, a teacher, a community leader, a part-time farmer, and also one hell of a storyteller. In, in between all the jokes that afternoon, however, I saw a room full of folks who were over the age of 60. I looked out the windows of the funeral parlor, and I saw abandoned buildings dotting Main Street, where there could have been schools or businesses. I scanned the faces of those folks gathered in the room, and I realized that they had all collectively witnessed the slow and steady decline of my hometown. Now, up until that point in my adult life, I had mostly been living in cities, and I, I felt that distance. I wanted to help rural places I didn't know how, and from an urban distance, I almost didn't know if I had a right to. But hearing those recollections of my grandmother's life that day um, really pushed me over the edge, um, and it pushed me to feel like I just had to do something. So in the time-honored tradition of men in my family on the verge of great ideas, I took some beers into the woods. <laughs> and like, after hashing things out for a while, I emerged with my big culture-changing idea. I would start a blog. <laughs> now, <laughs> to, be fair, um, to, to be fair to my own folly, at that point in uh, 2009, there wasn't really a digital space for rural artists in rural communities to come together. A space where you could connect the dots. Um, and the blog that I began was called Art of the Rural. And with the help of folks all across the country collaborating, uh, it's now a national organization. And I have one of the greatest jobs in the world because I get to travel and meet artists and communities all around the country. And like my grandmother, I get to help share their stories. Now, through my travels, what I've learned is that though we can talk about the, like, the aesthetic value of art and also talk about the deep economic impact of arts and culture in our communities, we also should be thinking about how arts and culture help shape social space, how in these projects we can bring a community into the process of transformation. I think that's truly remarkable. And I'd like to share with you all a couple projects that are doing that across the country that I've seen in my travels. The first that I'm going to take you all to is the Fermentation Festival. It happens in Reedsburg, Wisconsin, each autumn. Um, actually, just happened a couple weeks ago. If you're all in the area, you can visit it next year. Um, and it's a week-long celebration of food, agriculture, art, and regional identity. And true to the theme of fermentation, uh, the Worm Farm Institute calls it a live culture convergence. I love that metaphor of convergence because it seems so appropriate to where so many of us are at in rural America and our, and our communities. And we all know that America is growing more diverse, but few know that rural America is actually leading the way. Uh, since the last census, we know that people of color have accounted for 83% of the population growth in rural America. And while that demographic makeup of rural America is changing, the spatial relationship between rural and urban is also changing. Those same numbers tell us that 50% of rural people now live in urban counties. 
rural and urban folks, they share opportunities, they share challenges, and increasingly they share zip codes. And they will inherit the same future. Now to me, all of this convergence reframes how we talk about region, something that is at the heart of Fermentation Fest, and something which is sort of brought to life so beautifully through the Land Chimes installation that you all see here. Uh, it's a work by artists Joshua Lancey and Jamie Topper. And when you drive along the 50-mile farm art detour at Fermentation Fest, you'll see installations like this, but you'll also get to experience local businesses and cultural sites. You'll see food markets that have popped up in fields, and you'll see lots of amazing art contributed by individuals and families who live both within the agricultural parts of the county, but also along the main streets. And just as artists come from across the country to take part in Fermentation Fest, so do the crowds. Increasingly, folks from the Midwest, but also from the entire, entire reaches of America, can be found along the Farm Art Detour at Fermentation Fest. You see them talking along the sidewalks in Reedsburg. You see them sharing beers in the pubs all along that Farm Art Detour as well. Now, this regional vision of economic impact that's happening here at Fermentation Fest is very powerful, but there's something just as important happening. Events like Fermentation Fest bring together folks from all across the region, or even all across the country, to spark rural-urban dialogue. You'll see instances here at Fermentation Fest where folks from Madison, Chicago, and Minneapolis are together. And they're becoming invested in rural space in new ways. They're becoming educated. They're feeling a deeper connection to the communities which create their food and their natural resources. If you all will go with me on a journey, we'll go about 14 hours south from Reedsburg, Wisconsin. We'll go down the Mississippi, and we'll go to the town of York, Alabama. It's in a region known for its rich soil, its fantastic cultural heritage, but also for its generational poverty. Now, although poverty rates have fallen across the whole country, of the 353 persistent poverty counties that we have in this country, over 80% are rural. And oftentimes what we see with this is that, is that that poverty is clustered regionally. For instance, in this part of Alabama, which is often referred to as the Black Belt. Now, as a child of Appalachia myself, I can tell you that the effects of such concentrated economic hardship are twofold. First, you believe that matters are out of your hands. And secondly, you believe that in some way, your own culture is standing in the way of progress. Yet if you visit the Coleman Center for the Arts in York, Alabama, you encounter the seeds of a very different story. You'll find a gallery and an event space, but you'll also find physical evidence of new narratives happening all over town new social relationships being formed, and inspiring action and ideas. What we have up here right now is Matthew Mazzotta's Open House Project, which I think really gets at the innovative spirit of what's happening in York. Now, after many conversations with folks in town, the artists learned that people in York felt that there was a loss of public space, just as there was an increasing spread of dilapidated buildings across town. What folks in York wanted were integrated spaces where people from different races and different religions could come together. So utilizing an abandoned house as raw material, the artists created such a space. Now folks can come together through the structure for conversations, for film nights, for blues concerts, or for whatever the community desires. And as that house unfolds, this community tells a different story and this community move forward together on a different path. Now, after the success of that project, the Coleman Center and their community went to work building a very different structure from the inside out, this time using the arts to spark a spirit of entrepreneurship. Again, with social integration at its root, this community built a retail space downtown from an existing storefront. And it's now both a business incubator, but also a space for socializing and for art making. And both young and old have a seat at the table here you see uh, before us in this room. Um, it's a beautiful table marked by continuous 28-foot boards of Alabama cedar. 
Whether you're here to have barbecue or to build your new business, there's enough space for you at the table. Now, the power of these projects that I showed you, they can lead us back to our hometowns to ask how we can locally adapt the strategies of something like the Worm Farm Institute or the Coleman Center for the Arts. And whether it's those two places or the hundreds of other examples from rural America, I could have showed you all if I had an 80-minute TED Talk. Um, we learn how the answers are already here in our communities, in the dreams and desires of folks we see every day around us. I think perhaps the ultimate discovery along the journey for me that began with my grandmother's funeral was so simple that it took me six years to figure it out. The woman who helped put on the county fair and who helped, who helped introduce generations of young readers in my town to Shakespeare, she was forging the kinds of social relationships that would later inspire the artists that you all just saw. Now what I realize now is that my grandmother was an artist. The social bonds she created were art, and they deeply articulated why her place mattered. Furthermore, she was from a whole community of artists, whether or not they chose to call themselves that. On the day of her funeral, it was foolish of me to think for even a second that the most creative and resilient solutions to the problems we might have faced in our hometown would have come from anyone other than the folks in that room, whether they were 16 or 60. Now, as I leave you all today, I'd like to recognize the power of everyone in this room and the tremendous potential for all of us to gather and find common ground from all walks of life, including artists. That process starts, as it always does, when we come together around the table. Thank you. <laughs>